Welcome to the Discover Montcalm podcast, where we're going to take a look at the communities, the businesses, the attractions, and the people that make up Montcalm County. Here is your podcast host, Dwayne Reed. Welcome to Discover Montcalm podcast. My name is Dwayne. I'm the host today. And I have Adam Eller from Carson City here with us. Thank you for stopping by. Absolutely. A little Good bit of a here. drive? Yeah, about 50 minutes, I'd say, something yep. like that, yeah. It's amazing the distance between this side of the county and that side of the county. You don't yeah. think it's that long until you drive it. Yeah, and, you know, it's a, it's a nice back road country drive for us, you know. You know, it's no main drag coming out here, right. you know, which is nice. I like to drive through the country and see things that I haven't seen before, you know. And I like the drive back and forth because, and sometimes I call it dodging deer. <laughs> oh, yeah, out here for sure. <laughs> yeah, you never know. So you graduated from Carson City. Correct, yep. What year? 1998. 1998. Um, and I understand instead of going off to college, you went to work at the, yeah. at the uh, village market in Carson City. Yeah, I, I call it uh, Dean's School of Hard Knocks. So okay. Dean it is uh, your father. Is my father. Yep. Yep, so uh, family owned and operated business. Uh, we've had three grocery stores over the years, and um, my uncle's got the one there in Sheridan, and we sold the other one in Muir, our original store. I actually, fun fun fact, uh, that grand opening of that store was the day I come home from the hospital from being born. Okay. So uh, 1979 when he started there, uh, but he started actually before that. He was going to school at uh, Ferris State, and uh, actually going to teach at the college. Bruce Hoople, I'm sure. Okay, heard okay. the name. Heard the name. Okay, so him and uh, Bruce went to school together and um, for automotive mechanics instruction, which there was only one position. And uh, as it turned out, Wendy Blanchard uh, from Crystal, Michigan, had a grocery store there, which Dad worked at since he was 15. And uh, Dad was commuting back and forth to Big Rapids, taking a full load there. Uh, still working 40 hours a week for a dollar an hour. I mean, he he was grinding for sure. And um, Wendy came to him with an opportunity. And uh, that store in Muir had partially burnt. And him and some other guys invested and, you know, basically told Dad, hey, if, you, if you're thinking about a different career, you know, path, I've got this opportunity. And um, basically a situation where Dad comes in, Gets things rolling and then buys them out and gets his foot into the uh, into the grocery world. So, in a nutshell, that's where it all started. And you basically got your education working right there. Hands on, you know. Um, I had a bunch of letters to play football and stuff in different, uh, you know, smaller colleges. And Dad gave me that opportunity. You know, he said. Uh, you know, you could go off and play some ball for a few years and um, take some classes. Uh, one of the best classes he said that he ever took still to this day is psychology. You know, you're, you're dealing with people every day and, and knowing how they think and, yep. and employees and, and customers. And, and um, so, you know, he, he didn't uh, make the decision for me, but he, you know, his other option was, or you could step right into the family business. And um, for me, I've never been that guy that, can pick up a book and read it and take a test. I'm, I'm a, I've got to touch it. I got to feel feel it. it. Yep. Yep. Um, and so working beside him and watching him deal with, you know, day to day stuff and, and, you know, from every aspect of it and learning the trade, uh, we're meat cutters by trade. And, um, it was the best way for me to do it, honestly, in the end. And, you know, I don't have any regrets towards it. There's no better way that I could have learned it than the way that I did and dealing with situations that are real time, real life. Um, those things aren't in a curriculum. It's, it's hard to read it in a book. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. with teaching at the Career Center, I'm telling the kids, hey, you've got to experience this. Yeah. You know, just because you read it, you can be book smart and not very good working with customers. Correct. You know, so you know, you got to find that. You know, so that's a great way. I su- I suppose you started off sweeping floors and doing every job that was available. Yeah, there. I mean, I remember from the beginning, barely uh, in the Muir store. I remember having to stand on two milk crates stacked up <laughs> to stand beside Dad at the cutting table. Now, at that time, he didn't let me use a knife, but like when we were doing uh, pork chops and anything where you're using a bone saw, it creates that marrow, that bone dust. 
on the meat. So you've got a, it's a poly scraper and scraping the bone dust off and helping package and um, until I started running a knife as I got older. Um, but yeah, I, beside him every day and we built the stores from the ground up, um, have our own construction equipment and excavating equipment. And so, you know, really, really hands on from the ground up. And, um, you know, that's, that's given us all sorts of avenues, um, you know, is, is helping buddies uh, building pole barns. And we build a place down in Illinois where we hunt and our own houses. All that sweat equity um, is huge. Sure is. You know? I understand a few years ago you put a gas station in. So, yeah. In and you guys also did most of the construction? We, we, so we did. And a, a friend that I graduated with, I basically was the general um, on the inside portion, and Dad was the general on the out, outside. Uh, we had Mercer do all the underground and the tank work and, and that stuff. And then my buddy from high school um, is a builder by trade. Okay. And uh, I was just the general on it and, and kept the ball rolling. And uh, we've always kind of done it that way. We like to have our hands on things um, to know exactly what you got. And, you know, it's, I guess it's peace of mind. For us, we know exactly our, we have a vision and an end goal, and um, it just helps me to be in, inside of that the whole time, knowing what I've got and, and what I, or what I don't have, sure. you know. And um, so, yeah, we, we did that in 2019, right at the brink of the pandemic. So we, we actually opened uh, January of 20, which is quite wild. We started, um, I actually, being an avid hunter, our first builders meeting we had October 1st, the opener of bow season. And it was funny, some of the contractors were like, you know, what the heck are you doing? You're a bow hunter, you know? Yeah. And I said, I wanted to show you how serious I am about this project. Sure. So we didn't get a lot of hunting in that year, um, archery for sure, but um, it was a real rewarding job to see start to finish, you know, uh, seeing it all. Basically, when we laid all this out on a CAD program and laid, like, we kind of copied what our lodge looks like down in Illinois. And I've never had to, a lot of people don't get to go see it. So I want to kind of bring that home. Sure. A lot of uh, barn wood and galvanized steel kind of a, you know, we're known as the frontier town. And it gives it kind of that homey, warm feel. We threw a few deer heads in there, of course. And um, it's made it a really nice place. Uh, we've got truck fuel there um, for the big trucks. There's a lot of traffic where mm -hmm. I ran on M57. Um, and it's really, it's it's done actually, it's, it's exceeded our expectations, um, truthfully. And it's just generated more traffic for the entire business. For those that are listening, I'm talking with Adam from the Village Market in Carson City. And you're right on... M57. M57 yep, right yep. there. You're on the north side of the road. Correct. Yeah. On the north side of the road, just as you're, I guess, as you're leaving or coming in, depending on... Yeah, if you're which, headed west out of town. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, who has been the biggest inspiration in your life to date? Oh, definitely my dad. I mean, um, he's who got me where I am. He's, he's taught me everything. Obviously, my mom had a hand in that, too, and I, I can't forget her. She's... Uh, maybe helps with some of my more level-headed decisions and, uh, you know, and uh, thinking that way sometimes. Um, you know, there's things that get frustrating, you know, and you're dealing with the public, you run into things. I always tell people that, um, that have never been in customer service, uh, they should be in customer service mm -hmm. at some point, even just for, um, you know, I don't, I don't care if it's a week. And ultimately, you learn how to treat people better. Mm -hmm. You know, you see so many people that just get mistreated, um, and and those people have never been on the other side of that that fence, and it's it's tough. And you, there's a lot of times you you you've got to swallow your words, and you know the customer's always right kind of thing. And even if they're not, but you you learn how to walk yourself around those situations and come back to a positive side of it. And um, that's the thing that I actually love the most is just helping people. You know, they come to me with a need, and I'm able to fulfill that need. At the end of the day, that is my favorite thing that I do. That's a favorite thing. We'll be right back after this short message from our sponsors. We hope you're enjoying our podcast, and we'll be back after we thank our sponsors. West Michigan Technology and Design Solutions, your IT and web hosting experts. WestMichiganHelpDesk.com and DW Video. 
your source for video production, websites, and your local videotape, slides, and 8mm film transfer specialist. DWVideo.com. Now, back to our interview. Tell me a little bit about, it. it's the village market. Correct. Part. How do they, do you have a web presence? How do they find you on the web? Yep, yep. So our website is uh, yourvillagemarket.com. Okay, and you also have a Facebook page? Facebook page, yep, yep, Village Market. Uh, you can search on Facebook. Um, and we also have a Facebook page separate for our gas station. The gas station uh, is actually called VM Express. That's our convenience side. Okay. Um, but it's actually a gas station within side the grocery store, different okay. storefront and uh, different hours. And, and we, we close the store off with a gate when the store closes, so that remains open. Um, so it, it, it gives you a best of both worlds and one okay. stop. Take our listeners and our viewers through your market. You know, um, we could guess you've got grocery items, you've got yep. a deli, you, you know, walk us through, you know, what is available at your market there in, Car in Carson City. So when you come in through the main doors, the gas station sits off to the east side of the building, and that's where our deli is now, uh, where we, we have, a, I expanded the kitchen. Uh, we have a full line of paninis and sandwiches and pizzas and subs, and, and you, can, you can have that type of meal, or you've, you've got all of your typical you know, rotisserie chicken and chicken tenders, and all the grab-and-go stuff, too, is another option if you don't have the time to wait. Uh, we have a seating area there with several TVs to watch your uh, favorite show or catch up on the news or whatever. Um, uh, full coffee bar. I've got 20 doors of beverages, waters, and pops and all mm -hmm. that, as well as a beer cave. Um, Lotto um, is, is, a, is a real big thing. Um, and then as you head back in through the store, and then you'll head down uh, the east side of the store, down the front main aisle, all the groceries down through the center, of course, and you shop our perimeters starting with the produce and then dairy and then into uh, where you'll see me most of the time in our meat case. Um, we've got a 20-foot, well, actually, uh, with the pork and everything, we're actually probably about 38 feet total and a multi-deck on the end uh, with several, you know, we, we cut fresh every day, we grind fresh every day, um, we, we, we have five small houses on site, so we do a lot of our own, uh, I think 14 different varieties of snack sticks. Well, and, as a butcher, I would think that you'd probably do most of your stuff. Oh yeah. I mean that, yep. um, now where are you getting your beef from? Is it, is it locally or do you have a... So you know? our, our, our stuff comes out of Kalamazoo, Detroit, uh, Sherwood Food Distributors, and of course, uh, Spartan Nash, uh, warehouse out of Grand Rapids. Uh, they source a lot of things. Uh, a lot of the meats come in from Kansas and Iowa and out in the and the West out there is where a lot of that comes from. But uh, produce is all local Michigan stuff as the season allows. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of it is uh, you know Mexico and, and, and California and the produce kind of follows its way around in the sun, obviously. But um, and we do buy local produce too um, from local farmers. Sure. You know, I really, I like to do that too. And, and a lot of times, like even kids with a small corn stand, you know, if they want to, you know, sell into us too, we do that locally and I enjoy doing that. So, I mean, it just, we try to outsource any local stuff that we can get our hands on. You know, that's always, that's always the key goal um, when you can. And, um, and a lot of that's seasonal, but um, I understand you also do deer processing. So we do, yeah. So on the back side, um, to the north of the store, uh, which is our our warehouse, it doubles as a warehouse in the summertime. Um, but yeah, we we process. Uh, last year we processed thirteen hundred and and fifty deer actually, and um, we've been doing that. Well, Dad started that in Blanchard's back in the seventies, and we've carried that throughout all of our stores. But it needs to be in a separate. You need to have that in a separate. Technically, you don't have to. Okay. Uh, but we do. We right. separate them. We want to keep it that way. Um, it's just a better, uh, a better image all the way around to keep that separation complete. Um, but it is, yeah. It's a separate facility out back where it's got its own cutting table with all of its own equipment. It's separate from our our retail case. We're very efficient. Uh, over the years of doing it, um, we've we've been recorded. By the DNR, it was funny. One day, a story: um, uh, a gentleman come in with his grandson had shot his first deer, 
Okay. And uh, we got it all checked in and everything. And we had just, we're winding down for the day. So I got a bunch of guys kind of idle. We're cleaning. We know we've got people coming out of the woods soon. And we want to get there and, and have them skinned to load our coolers for the next day's work. So we were kind of hanging around waiting for dark. Well, he says, on when he's leaving, he says, how long, um, you know, before we, you know, the deer's done? And I said, uh, I'd say 15 minutes, you know. And he, he kind of giggled and he said, I'll see you in a few days. And I said, I'll tell you what. I said, grab your grandson, and you can follow your deer through the whole process, and we'll put it in the back of your truck, and you'll go home with it. And he just, he says, you, are you serious? And I said, absolutely. Well, the DNR was there checking uh, heads for CWD, and uh, so he did a stopwatch. So from the hoof, skin cut, processed, and back into his truck, it was 11 minutes on the DNR stopwatch. You've done a couple of these. A few. You've done a couple of these. We, which we've is, done a few, for which sure. Is, which is great. For the old you that are listening, I have Adam here from the Village Market in Carson City. Um, you're also a hunter. Yes. And, and you yep. also have done some stuff with video. Yep. Um, tell me a little bit about how you got into video and where you're at. You know, kind of give me the real quick version of where you're at today with, with the video and, and the hunts and the outdoor stuff. Yeah. So it's 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 real wild actually um actually you know, i had the passion for all this stuff in high school just like you do and um started in a class there we had a media class and we would actually hijack the school's cameras and film hunts and they would at that time uh let us air them on the morning announcements even sure um which was fun that's kind of where it all the baseline uh and then i'd i'd watched a guy on tv growing up this tom nelson from the grand ledge area and literally every penny he's ever made has been off hunting in some way or form and I was working on the Sportsman's Channel at that time through a company out of Baltimore, Maryland, and just hooked up with this guy as I was part of representation of Team Michigan. And I run into him at a show down south, and he said, Adam, what, you know, what are you doing? I hadn't seen him since I was a little kid. My dad bought my first bow and arrow from him when he worked at Anderson Archer in Grand Ledge. And I said, oh, you know, I'm trying to do this thing that you do. I, I always had a fascination for it and watching him grow up on TV and stuff. And he said, we get back home, why don't we hook up? I'd like to talk to you. So long story short, he gets a hold of us when we get home and they brought the general manager out and we sat down and had a meeting and um, I submitted a video uh, resume basically of some hunts that we had done and some, some work and uh, they offered me a position. And now I am uh, co-hosting mm -hmm. uh, the American Archer with the very guy that I grew up idolizing on TV. So, I mean, it's it's been a surreal trip to say the least i mean every 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 year i you know it just gets more and more exciting and more involved and and, and that the passion of hunting and then getting to share it with everybody it just intensifies it even more and, and that's kind of how you and i have met through a, yeah. a, a mutual friend steve foster yep um you know he was at greenville tool and die he decided yep. he wanted to go out and do hunts now he's Doing camera he does a work. lot of film for me. Yep, yep, a lot of camera work. And yep. and then that's how you and I got introduced. Yep. Um, you know, so it, it's amazing how video and yeah. people and and you know that six degrees of separation can yeah. kind of get right down to you know very close. Um, we're going to take another pause for our sponsors. We hope you're enjoying our podcast, and we'll be back after we thank our sponsors. West Michigan Technology and Design Solutions, your IT and web hosting experts, westmichiganhelpdesk.com, and DW Video, your source for video production, websites, and your local videotape, slides, and 8mm film transfer specialist, dwvideo.com. Now, back to our interview. Let's get back to the Carson City uh, area. Mm -hmm. What do you like doing best over in that area? You know, what when you're not working and you're not filming, what are you out doing in the Carson City? You know, inform the audience, what what is there to do over there? Well, during the summertime, we spend a lot of time. We've got a lake house just up the road at Crystal Lake. My grandma had a campground there back in the day. And um, my ma, my parents bought the, the place off the estate and our, our whole family gets together there a lot and through the holidays and we've got a boat on the lift there and and dad's got a pontoon and you know it's nice you know a lot of people are like you know why do you want to 
a lake house four miles from your house. You know, a lot of people have them up north. And, you know, for us in, in retail, especially a lot of weekend work, and that's when you make a lot of your money, and we got to be close. And um, quite frankly, so we can enjoy it. You know, yeah. if it's two or three hours away, we're limited to the amount of times that we get there to use it. So. And Carson City, or not Carson City, but Crystal is... That lake's beautiful. It's a beautiful lake. It's a clean lake. We're very blessed to have a lake like that, that close. And uh, just a big group of our friends, including Jason and his wife. And there's a whole group of us that we just spend a lot. Of, that's where we relax. You know, we work a lot of hours and a lot of stress. And that's where we go to unwind. And it's, it's awesome that it's in our backyard. Sure. Last question. In your opinion, why should somebody discover Motcom? Discover Motcom. I, th I think there's just so much to offer. You know, being where we're at, centrally located like we are, I feel like we're kind of in the heart of all of it. You know, I, I love our seasons. We have such a good distinction in our seasons and all of the local, uh, uh, you know, all the apple orchards in the fall are so fun and all those kind of things mm -hmm. and um, good produce. You know, we're just kind of in the middle of it all. We're not too far from the bigger, you know, Grand Rapids, if you go there, and, you know, we, we like to do the brewery. Yeah, the craft and over brewery. by you, you've got Lansing not too far, Mount Lansing, Pleasant not too far. Yeah, we're, you know, we're an hour, an hour, 45 minutes. We're kind of in the middle of, of all of it. And um, I, I just, that's what I really love about it is just the location, beautiful area, a lot of ag. I'm, you know, I'm, I have a family that farms. And it's just, to me, well, it, it, obviously it's home, and it always will be. And I just, I just, I love the back roads. I okay. love going out at night and, and grabbing the binoculars and, and seeing the deer herd. And we've got a very uh, strong deer herd in a lot of the areas. Uh, like you said, dodging deer. Yeah, you, know? you are. Um, tell us again how they can find your business, website, phone number, and your location, your address. Yeah, so we're, we're located at 10715 East Carson City Road, just west of Carson City on M57. Uh, the gas station, the grocery store, are all right there together. Our processing facility is located directly to the north behind our, our uh, delivery ramp. Uh, you can find us on the web at www.yourvillagemarket.com. Uh, Facebook, search us, VM Express, Village Market Processing, Village Market Grocery. Um, we've got a little bit of everything, and I'd like to... Uh, Take care of whatever needs you may have if I'm able to do it. Well, we like to keep it local. And yeah. That's, and that's the whole reason behind doing the Discover Montcom podcast. I want to thank you for listening and watching on YouTube. Remember to buy and shop locally. Connect and subscribe to Discover Montcom podcast at discovermontcompodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Discover Montcom podcast. To be featured in an upcoming show, contact Dwayne at 231-250-9624. Remember to subscribe at discovermontcompodcast.com.